Virus Ross here, the Brinton History Team, and today we are visiting the his place of the historical Camelot in South Wales. It's called Caermelin, it's still on the maps, and you can see the outlines of where the castle was. <laughs> How about that? Right, before we dive into the psych visit video, I'm going to show some video in the background. You can watch that, quite enjoy it. Uh, just get some idea of the views and the scenery. You can see Cardiff across there, the islands of Echne and Rochney. And we've got a clip then, a video of Alan Wilson himself presenting this field, which we've been to visit. It was filmed 1994 by Lee Pennington from the fantastic film Wales History in Bondage. You can buy a copy of that from the website, so please look into that, or from uh, Joe Lee Productions. In America. Right, so to read from the book uh, Arturius Rex um, Discovered Again, just want to point out as you've already seen, hopefully, on the other videos, there's a fortress system defending the Vale. If you also can remember that Cardiff was tiny in those days, the city is post industrial. So around the south coast, between the cliffs, you'd have the forts defending. You'll see the ridge behind where we are, where the, the fortresses are along there. And in the centre, you've got Kerr Melin. Uh, which you'll see seems to give the original source for the name Kerr Melot or Kerr Melo. Melo, Melit, this is how it comes about, okay? So to read from the book. As we can locate the court of Arthur at Kerr Leon, then what are the medieval legends of the court at Camelot? The idea of Camelot being a pure invention is weak, for the Dark Ages and the medieval Middle Ages were not periods of either artistic or literary invention. As the Kerr Leon court exists, then so also must the Camelot court. Now you must say Camelot very carefully, for it is a Norman French rendering of an old Welsh name. Therefore, we are not looking for a place actually called Camelot, but for a court of the King of Glamorgan and Gwent, which had a name which was twisted or converted into Camelot. As the bulk of the evidence available shows that the kings of Glamorgan and Gwent tend to be concentrated in the areas raiding out around Caerleon on the east and Cardiff and the Vale of Glamorgan in the west, we can localise our search. We can also be certain that we're looking for a typical 6th century site. So the simple method which they adopted <coughs> was to first list all the possible sites, all of them and no exceptions. We then took the word Camelot and broke it up into Ca or Care, which means fortress, and Melot. Uh, the clue we needed was to discover just what this Melot might have been derived from. So we took a Welsh dictionary from 1688 and 1861 and made a list of all the promising M words. On oh, this blaze, by the way. Bob's wonderful dog. <laughs> Everyone likes a dog in a video. <clears throat> anyway, there is, back to the book, there is a fortress site of the period which can be connected with the word Melin, which is yellow, which is also in close proximity to sites long named for Melin or Mill. We find Mill Road, Mill Farm. We went to visit some of these places. They're still there, the names. And so on. Yet it is Melin Yellow, which is the clue to the identification of Camelot. For the medieval Camelot was the corruption of Kerr Melin, the Yellow Fort. Once again, when the site of the Yellow Fort is visited, this is at the top end of it, by the way, at the elevated section. Could possibly be a burial mound. We've got reasons for thinking that. I'm showing the stones just to give uh, all these stones fans out there a chance to have a look. See if you can spot anything. So once um, and then you'll see the sites, the, the fortress site going on down. And we're doing some dousing and various other tests and mapping and all sorts as we do on the Britain's Hidden History Group. So once again, when the site of the Yellow Fort is visited, it is situated exactly where it clearly should be. And it requires very little imagination at all to conceive of this place as the favourite residence of the king. The site is clear, <laughs> and at present, uh, this book was written <clears throat> back in the 1980s, is in no danger of being vandalised by local councillors and developers. Fortunately, it is not in Cardiff, where it would almost certainly have been destroyed by a council whose record of destruction is consistent. Well, as you'll see in the follow-up video, the buildings and the house building is sh accelerated. And it's getting nearer and nearer to uh, these sites. And I actually had a little bit of a confrontation, which is not like me, actually, uh, with one of the 
building developers because the name's not even Welsh, nothing. And just, anyway, that's another issue for another day, which I will get up. All right, you can see what's being done to some of the nearby historic sites of what is well be uh, Camelot. So without further ado, over to Mr. Wilson. And the area most connected legendary with Arthur was none other than Camelot itself. There is a record quoted by the, the, the Reverend Vicar Dowsu, who was the historian around here, that there was a marriage here in 1453, so the castle was still standing then, right? And below is Yellow Wells Farm, Yellow Wells, because there were sulphur springs there. Yes. And this is why this was Kaya Melin, the Yellow Fort, you see? Okay? And it's also known as Keyboard, and Keyboard means the mutually together table. And it's well known, actually, in Welsh history that this was the number one place of the Glamorgan kings. So if it's the number one place of the Glamorgan kings, if King Arthur is the son of King Myrig, grandson of Tudric, Glamorgan kings, this would be his number one place. So Caer Melin is conceivably the Norman French Camelot. Do you understand? There's Panath, Arthur's headland, mm -hmm. and there's the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a terrific view. It is. And this is why it's, it's logical, it's a centre fort from a system of forts, all of, one on that hill, one on that hill, all around here are these smaller forts, uh -huh. which you could all see from here, like a cartwheel. And this is the central position, they signal in, you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this is where the king would have to be. In this direction, you can see that's the south wall going along there. When we go over there, you'll see what a big drop it is. That's the south wall, down to the corner of the field. And you've got clearly when we get down there, you film it better. An eastern wall and a north wall, there. And so you've got a, a large enclosed area. This was the area of, of this castle. And like I told you, it was a castle in 1453, and the main area. It was the main place of the entire area. The, Cardiff was in the parliamentary hundred of Keyboard, not the other way around. This was, the, this was the central, most important place in this entire district, this where you're standing now. And this was the place of the castle of the Glamorgan kings. Kibur, kibur in Welsh means mutually together table. <laughs> mutually together table, it's evocative, isn't it? It might mean round table, you see. It's a bit of a disappointment in some ways, because everybody thinks of Camelot as great towers and walls. And, the, well, there would have been. Well, that's how it, there would have been, yeah. you see? But uh, how on earth do you persuade anybody to uh -huh, uh -huh. do anything about it? It wasn't a disappointment, not at all. It only took a little imagination to realize what it once was. By locating the hill forts, then finding this place in the central position, Wilson and Blackett had found Carmilla, Camelot. So there you go, the wonderful narration of Lee Pennington. And Alan Wilson showing the site that we are visiting today. And if you'd like to know more about Keybore, we've got an old map of the area, and you can see Cardiff is a small part of the Keybore country of 100, rather than the other way around. It's available from Cumroglyphics if you want to buy a copy. Yes, unfortunately, there is a public footpath. So you can see there's a place to pull in, you see the cars in the background, and you six of us together. I've only got Tim, then Bob, there's Julian. Graham and Legolas, Robert, and we're off to have a look at the actual site itself, which is good fun, easy to do. Yes, here's the first field you have to walk, walk across, <laughs> which Tim looked up this morning, because that's not the site of the fort, but the one next to it, but still remarkably interesting, as you see in a second. You walk across that, and you'll see the fence, and there's a stile that you can step over. And please go over there and be very aware if it is lambing season or anything like that. Do not go anywhere near or disturb the sheep and the lambs, obviously. Yeah, half past seven this morning, I checked on the old um, 1888 National Library of Scotland maps. And I thought I'd just look at some of the old field names that uh, are in the area. And this one here is um, Kai Melin which is quite a coincidence yeah. so um uh that was a that was a good find that was a good discover it is that ties in doesn't it there we go you can see there's Cadiz in the background you can see Ethne 
the island there, which is a religious retreat. Place of healing, perhaps. And across the right, you've got Penarth. Could it be the head of Arthur? Or the head of the battlements? And across the right to the left there, you can see over to England. So you'd be up on this hill, you keep a constant eye on the other shore. Wondering, wondering if our attack's ever going to come. This is a great central point. So you can see Bob Morgan snapping away. They're very clear, raised and levelled area, which is the site of the old fort or court. Yes, it's all on that raised area there. And it's obviously been levelled up at this end. Got the, um, you can just make out the, the aerial tower, transmission tower there. That's uh, so you've got Wenacht there, and in the in the notch in the gap behind Bob here, you've got um, Castle Morgraig on the on the right hand side of that notch. Because that's the one above Caerphilly, isn't it? Yeah, and then you've got the um, the Lanishan and Lisvane ridges here going off to Redry. Uh, just saying from this from this point where the where the castle would have stood. You look down to the islands, they're almost in alignment, kind of north-south. And even on the map, when you look at the map, you can see sort of the uh, Echne, Flatholm and Steepholm just below it. Could be something Ooh. to do with an alignment or something. Okay, just to uh, illustrate the point uh, Robert's observed there, uh, this is the Seven Estuary. Also give you an idea of where we're talking about. There's Cardiff, Barry, the South Wales coast down here. we got England, of course. Uh, which you can see as you looked across the bay. It's not that far, although it's one of the biggest tidal uh, areas in the world. Right, so what we have here, mostly referred to by their meaningless names, Flatome and Steepome, like some Viking nonsense. Echni and Rochni are proper Welsh names. Be nice to see those being used again. And what Roberts observes, if you draw a line straight through them, you come to here, which is roughly where we're looking at them, the places. Um, oh, by the way, the yellow pegs are research doing for the um, Where Jesus is Buried book. And you can see some of the key saints figures where their old churches are. Like St. Melons used to be called Llanoi Rug, things like that. But that's another subject. And what's interesting to note here, though, I'm glad I did come on here. You get an idea of the ridges and everything that protect this area. And there's Liz Vane, which is the place of the courts. Okay, so this is the kind of area we're looking at. So, back to the video. <laughs> Yeah, so here we are at the bottom end of the field described by Alan Wilson as being where the fort or the court, uh, the main residence there of King Arthur would actually be, and it's quite impressive sight. Right, the level here, yeah. You've got another level behind it, then another level behind that. You've got at least four, maybe five different levels to the yeah. side. Yes, here's the view looking up the field. And, yeah, interesting stone at the top, which may or not be significant. I couldn't see any markings or anything, but it does seem to mark a possible burial mound at the top of this, which is interesting. And then looking back down at the field, and you can see the members of the group doing different research, looking at different things. <laughs> a lot of research, some very, very interesting findings, which we'll be uh, publicising soon. Are you looking at me? And you, and you, and you, are you looking at me? <laughs> Interested spectators. And here's a, another stone just behind the other one, so just over the brows, you couldn't see it from the bottom. Are those markings, there's something on it? I have to say, I can't really see anything, but you have to look at these things. It might be significant, you know, maybe there's a, uh, we think there might be a burial site there, maybe this is a marker for someone. You can see there's a little bit of a, below a hill there, a little bit of a mound there, but actually it, it links up and forms, and, you, and it, it continues round, you can just vaguely see it. But it continues round in, in a circular fashion. Could possibly be the, uh, out, you know, one of the, outer walls or the inner outer wall because uh, I suspect that the outer wall was further further out again 
and again I was, I was talking to, to to Rob if you have a place like this there's got to be some other dwellings around it where the servants and the and those kind of people and, and people who were servicing the king are located so are they in it makes sense really for them to be up on the, on this ridge that comes comes up here so the fields kind of in which Tim was found out there probably is where the, the servants quarters would be found Listen, I'm sure I read somewhere that the Killian Lodge Hill one is, would be the military court and then this is the residence of, of, of the kings. But because you, you've got this vein, wasn't it, which they, they yeah, are... Yeah, and Roth is the court. Is that the, yeah, isn't it? the stone court, is it? Yeah. Lease, lease yeah, vein? Lease vein, yeah. Yeah, they're all very near, aren't they? Which is down there. So, so you've got the king's residence, the court, and then he's surrounded yeah. by, by all of his fortresses. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you've got the palace down on Kyle Wagon, is it? The, uh, yeah. It, yeah, down by Bridge Inwood. Kai Mead. Kai Mead, yeah. Have you got a light off of this bit then, Bob? No, there's <laughs> no light off of this at all. And they've just oh, like the hills up there. Yeah, yeah. You can get get for for lower down there, and you can get for round round the corner there. <laughs> uh, I haven't looked for the, the the hill up there, but I was looking for this area around the here. The bit we think is Camelot. <laughs> the bit you think is Camelot. <clears throat> Absolutely no coverage. And they've just released the 2019 lidar one, which is more. Um, it's a one meter resolution rather than two meter resolution. Nope, not included. Uh, Bizarre. <laughs> It's like two miles from Cardiff or something. Yeah, and, and you would think of all the areas, you know, so you, you've got a, anything remotely around Cardiff. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. This area's out. <laughs> um. So another great site visit, and as always, as many questions as answers after the day and discussion points. We've got this area's been on with the fortress. I'm going to go across to the other side, that larger field, that's Kaer Melin as well, or Kai Melin. Always funny to watch people climbing over stiles. There's Graham, see more from him, a lot more from him in future videos. And there's Superfit Julian. I was calling my bodyguard, he just leaps over there, no problem. I'm going to go up through this field and look at this little thing. Look at that. Watch this. Lift this up. Little hole for the dog, look. Which blaze just went running through with great delight. Yes, this is the walk back towards the cars. This is the field, as Tim uh, points out earlier, is called Kai Melin or K Melin. Uh, we've got a few ideas of what that could mean as well. Clearly, the whole area is linked together. It's big at first scenes. And there's the high ground underneath those conover trees. And I would love to get up there and see if that's actually where the citadel is. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, the bit I'd love to follow up with is in there. This guy's got a breastwork defending it. It's very impenetrable. Uh, neck eye nettles, warning signs for overhead power or something. Ha 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 ha. It looks exactly what they expect to find if you're trying to find a hidden site. This would be another visit if you want to get up there. It'd take a serious effort that would. Hmm. Oh well. It is called hidden Britain's hidden history for a reason. And if you want to hide something, that's how you hide it. So if you want to come yourselves, it's easy enough. Just go to junction 3030 on the M4. Follow the signs for the Dutch Garden Centre. Well oh, instead of going in the entrance on the left, go up just Oh, I don't know half a mile up the lane, you'll see a pulley on the left, and that'll get you up to Kaer Melin. Very nice part of the world. You know, there's lovely views of Cardiff. Some of the views around here really are spectacular. Well, thank you for watching the video. Really hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. If you'd like to follow up on these subjects, there's a growing range of books available from the Cumroglyphics.com website. There's also the growing Britain's hidden history community. Uh, you can join in, find out what's going on, do your own site reports, contribute to what's happening. And as you must know by now, we have a live show every Sunday evening at 8 o'clock, where we have some sort of uh, inverted commas live music, not always me singing, and a bit of fun, and go through the latest news and updates, interviews with people like Alan Wilson, 
and as you can see from this site visits to the tops of mountains to the bottoms of caves trying to work out what messages our ancestors are sending us why is there a lion stone in the field what's in it with these ancient massive megalithic walls why they're being destroyed you can also read Egyptian hieroglyphs using the Welsh language it's called Camaroglyphics if you haven't tried that you really should there's a growing Facebook group and please if you'd like to support the work from just a few pounds a month on the Patreon site to find the description makes all the difference. As this is British history, there is no funding or support or grants for what we're doing. We rely on book sales and people's generosity. So until the next time, Hevuch!